I'm Jason McKenzie. I'm originally from Bath, Maine. Currently residing at Christopher's house. I'm 45 days sober. Hi, welcome to another episode of Recover Loud. I'm your host, Mike Paddleford, and I recover loud. Let's go. I'm on a journey to discover the truth. Living life and recovery is lovely. You got the power in you. Surround yourself with positive energy. Judges hitting people with provocative penalties. Need to make a change. Advocate to change the laws. Prove the people that it's not insane. When you stand behind a cause, I'm here to speak about the pain. Recover loud to normalize the disease that's been killing all my friends and my family. The time is now to let it all go and recover loud. The benefit is healthy people, family and friends that never have to overdose ever again never have to plead out to a lesser offense i'm proud to say that i recover loud i never thought i could but i'm so proud that i discovered how to live my life again controlling my own destiny i needed recovery i still need it desperately addiction never defined my identity. i recover loud here to tell my own story i recover proud save a life of like 40 i recover loud yeah i recover loud i recover loud yeah I recover thou, I recover thou, here to tell my own story I recover proud, save a life of like 40 I recover thou, yeah, I recover thou, I recover thou, yeah, I recover thou Hi Jay, welcome to the show I uh, appreciate you taking the time to share your story with us um, You mentioned you're staying at Christopher's home um, And uh, if anybody has been following me on, on Facebook uh, I'm the living manager here and you're one of the guys I get to uh, to support. Um, you mentioned you're 45 days sober? Yes, 45. So uh, how often has that happened for you in the past? Uh, I don't even think I can count one time. Yeah. Um, you have had periods of sobriety. And uh, how far did you make it before? I think my max sobriety time is 27 days. When you were out using, um, what kinds of things were you doing? Uh, what, what was your drug of choice? Originally, I started off with alcohol. That was that was for a long period of my life, and then I found crack cocaine. Yeah. Uh, how long would you say you were using crack? Um, I started last November. I ended up going to jail for a small stint, and then I got back out, and I made it through the summer, and then I would say around October of last year. Yeah. So that was the most recent drug that you were using. Right. Um, and when you picked up crack, I mean, what was that doing for you? Uh, for me, for the crack, I, I switched over from uh, alcohol because uh, alcohol controlled my life and it, uh, it made me do things that, that was out of my control because I'm a blackout drinker. Yeah. So when I found crack cocaine, it, it covered up the same things I, I wasn't trying to deal with or feel without the consequences because I can, I can kind of control my actions. And, and with crack, you weren't blacking out? Absolutely not. Yeah, so um, did you feel like you were doing things that uh, you couldn't control still, even with the crack? Yeah, absolutely. I, I never had something grasp me so hard as, as cocaine and the alcohol. I mean, yes, it was addictive, but it wasn't, it wasn't nearly as close to the crack. So for that last, last period where you were using, how bad did it get? Uh, I got to the point where I needed it every day and then I happened to find another substance which was uh, meth, mm. which was even more controlling and even more addictive and that's when my my life really, really spiraled out of control. How far down did it get? I got to the point where I was living on the streets of Lewiston for, for a few months and uh, destroying everything in the way, uh, mainly relationships. Uh, so when you say you were living on the streets, was that actually physically on the streets? Yeah, it was definitely physically on the streets. Going like days and days without showers, uh, just struggling to get the next eye. And and where would you actually find to sleep? Uh, I was living on the streets, uh, different different uh, cubby holes and whatever I could find, like doorways and just random places. Now, had alcohol brought you to that point ever before? Or? Absolutely not. Like, drinking alcohol was, I don't know, I, I grew up, I grew up like, I don't even know, like I can't even explain it, alcohol didn't never drag me down like that. So, uh, speaking of growing up, um, you know, where, where was it you grew up? Originally I grew up in uh, uh, Bath, Maine, but we relocated because my mom thought it would be a good idea to relocate because my dad was an alcoholic. 
So we ended up moving to Randolph where I grew up the majority of my life. Mm. And, and Randolph's right down the street from us here. So sure. this is your, your stomping grounds. Yeah. Um, so uh, at what age did you move over this way? I think I was uh, early. I was probably 14, 15. Yeah. I, I ended up leaving Randolph because I, did, I felt like I didn't fit in with the other kids. So I ran to Augusta mm -hmm. and I found, I found a crowd that I, I fit in with and that's where I resided. Yeah. And was that a good crowd? Yeah, for a short time, I ended up in, in the youth center. Okay. Um, so, how long were you in the youth center then? And that was around what age? I would say 14, and then from 14 to 18, pretty much the whole time. I was so, in the youth center. so, you were raised at the youth center. So, did you ever graduate high school? No, I never graduated high school. Yeah. No, I never graduated high school. My story led to like the youth center, and I went through a lot of abuse. And then from straight from the youth center at eight, I think I was 17, trying to 18, they bounced me over and I did two and a half years in the prison. And that's pretty much where my life been since. So from 18 right up to 42, I've got a majority of my life in prison and that's what I'm dealing with today. So yeah, from 14 to 17 the youth center, mm -hmm. 18 to 40 in prison. So um, you haven't really had a whole lot of time to live on your own. No, nope, not at all. Yeah. Like, and I made my main focus is being here at the Christmas house is trying to get my life back on track. I uh, get my life back on track and like learn as an adult how how to provide for myself and and uh, yeah, just learn how to be an adult. I guess. What What were some of the things that you did that led you to prison? Oh man, my drinking, my drinking uh, is definitely the cause of the the time I've spent. It started out like petty stuff, starting to steal beer or whatever it was that I needed, or clothes, because I lived on the streets as a child too, as a kid, as a teenager, I was running the streets. So I just, petty theft. So and you said you, you were living on the streets basically in Augusta as well? Yeah, I bounced around from people's houses and uh, lived on pretty much like sidewalks and steps and whatever I'm fine. Mm -hmm. And and where, where was your mom at? My mom at the time, I had no clue. Uh, all the youth center time. I remember one day my mom saying I was in the youth center just coming to visit and she said that remember this I'll stick through you this one time and I did like four months in the youth center and she stuck with me and she said it'll never happen again and she made that true the whole time. So once once you got in trouble again she wasn't there to support yeah. you? I did pretty much 25 years well with my mom, my dad and any of my family. No letters, no phone calls. So that the whole time you're in prison you, you didn't have family supporting you writing your letters? No. no. Nobody visiting you. Mm. Yeah. Um, I mean, and, and I can just imagine, you know, I spent a very short amount of time in prison, 10 months, um, and I had support. My family was sending me money. Um, you know, I was getting letters from my grandmother and, and some friends back home. Um, and that's really what helped carry me through that time. Um, so to spend that much time without having any outside contact, mm. um, you know, I, I'm sure that that caused some trauma in itself. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So then when you got out on the streets, um, when you got out, were you being released into programs or were you just coming pretty out much, without? Pretty you know? much, they just boo you with a $50 gate money and they yeah. send you on your way. And $50, money, uh, $50 gate money, that don't go far. The first thing right. I would buy was probably a 30 rack and pack of cigarettes. My routine was two or three months out on the streets and then right back to prison. Yeah. <clears throat> so when you were released, did you have a, a plan? Did you have somewhere to go every time? Each time you got out, were you no. were you headed somewhere? No, that's that's. I think that's one of the reasons why I beat myself up because all the dead time I did when I could have furthered myself, whether it was yeah. education or just preparing myself to get out, and just pretty much sat around, watched TV, and let life, yeah, like, let the time go by. And that, and that's one thing that that you've been working on here is you know finding things to do that are going to make tomorrow a better day for you yeah. without a plan without uh resources without support you know uh I, i'm not sure what the system expects people to do at that point mm -hmm. um you know the recidivism recivit rate is is so high because they're not offering people you know uh, a plan a program you know so support and resources to when they get out it's it's really Difficult for somebody like you, who didn't have family, who didn't have, um, you know, that support on the outside, 
or a destination. Mm. Um, so you mentioned alcohol ruined uh, relationships. Yeah. Um, you know what? What's your relationship history like? My relationship history. Um, Did you have any long-term relationships? Yeah, actually, I had. I had. I had a very good. No, I wouldn't say very good. I had a long, I had a nine-year relationship with my kid's mother. Uh, the whole nine years, most of it was self-destructive, because my my kid's mother was a uh, not an alcoholic or addict, and I was the alcoholic. Mm -hmm. And the destruction of that relationship lasted for nine years. So that's some of the guilt I hold on to today. Yeah. And you know, that, that's something we all do. Um, you know, earlier, when we're using, we, we drink and, and it destroys things, and then we feel bad about it, and we use and we drink some more. Um, and in, in recovery, we, get to, we have to face those things. Right. You know, and we can do things today to make that better, uh, to repair those relationships. Um, how old is your daughter today? My daughter is uh, nine. And uh, when was the last time you got to see her? I saw her a few weeks ago. She came up for a visit. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and before that, how soon? How long had it been? Uh, it's been a few months, but I had to, before that, it's been multiple years because I've been so caught up yeah. with my own my own emotions and the things I'm dealing with and my addiction. Yeah. Like I had no. I focus on everything, but that was the most important thing to me is my daughter. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, building that relationship today is one of your goals, um, and, and you're working on that. And, uh, you know, that's one of the things that I got to get back was the relationship with my kids. Um, you know, my kids were always with me, uh, but I was using all the yeah. time. You know, I was high all the time. And they didn't necessarily know what was going on in the house. But when they found out later on, they connected all those dots yes. and the resentments built. And, um, you know, I had uh, my one son, that, uh, Dylan, that joined the Marines for a while. He didn't want to talk to me. Um, and then because I was doing well in recovery, because I was working, because I was doing everything I could to make myself better, he decided to come back mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, be a part of my life and, and have me as part of his. So we know that that is one of the gifts of recovery. Um, you know, so, and, and she's still young enough that you can do the best you can today mm -hmm. and still have a good future. I think for me, as being an alcoholic addict, I, I chose I chose to shut that down because I was still actively using, and mm -hmm. she's in a good home, and I didn't yeah. want to affect her schooling or affect whatever her yeah. attitude is or what her feelings are, so I chose, I guess, to just to, to step away yeah. and, let, and let her enjoy the things that she can enjoy without seeing me actively. Yeah. In use. Yeah. Um, and in order for her to enjoy that, you felt it was better that she didn't even have her father. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and and today in recovery, I think uh, the best thing she can have is a is a healthy father. Yeah, absolutely. On my visit with her, it was like the most amazing thing. Like she took to me like I was never even gone. Yeah. Yeah. That that gives me motivation and to be in want to be like sober today. That's a that's a that's a major thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, you we talked earlier. You said you had uh, periods of sobriety, uh, never more than twenty eight days. Um, what did you do then to try to get sober? On um, for them twenty eight days. Yeah. I just you just quit. Yeah, I just grit my teeth through it pretty much. Yeah. Had you tried programs before? Yeah, I tried multiple. I just I don't. I think it was more due to the fact of I had to do it because of a uh, court of probation. Yeah, yeah. Now, is this program here something you're ordered to do? No, it's not. It's by, by my will. Yeah. But when I come into it, it was kind of for the wrong reasons. It was relationship-wise. Okay. Uh, I was trying to do it for somebody else. Yeah. And then that... Uh, that's a tough one, I guess. Yeah. Like, cause I have to do it for myself. I have to realize it's it's for me. Yeah. Like, there's no, cause I couldn't even do it for my kids. I got a 15 year old daughter too that I ain't never done it for. I like, mm -hmm. I have two daughters that it still didn't get me right. Yeah. To to not want to use. I think what it is is I got so much shit in the past that I still haven't. I've forgiven shit that's that's happened to me or other people that like caused harm to me, but I haven't 
totally forgiven my own self for the things I put people through. That's yeah. my biggest barrier today. Is yeah. Just we're we're taught all these things, you know. Um, addiction is a disease. We don't control it. We have no control over it. Um, we've done things in the past that we don't like. You know, we we beat ourselves up over. It. Um, but realizing that this is a disease that controlled us, mm. you know, um, I, I'm, I'm always talking about choices. Uh, when we were using the choices, yes, are there. Mm. I can use or not. But the choice is always going to be that I'm going to use. Um, everything else comes after that. Now, if I'm, am I going to take the kids to the Little League game? Yes, as soon as I use. Um, are we going to go on vacation? Yes, if there's money left over after I buy what I need. Mm -hmm. You know, so the choice to use or not wasn't there. The rest of it was. Um, and uh, as a result of me choosing, you know, uh, as a result of me using, sometimes the kids didn't get what they needed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not having groceries in the house. I didn't choose to neglect my kids. I wasn't able to once I got what I needed. Mm -hmm. Um, so, when I accepted that, I mean, I fully accept responsibility for all the things that I put them through, but knowing that I couldn't have done any better, um, because I was controlled, my choices were made for me, yeah. um, you know, helps me to, to at least forgive myself, you know, because I was sick. I was not physically capable of making the better choices at that time, you know, now in recovery, I can start to make those choices um, and making the right choices I can be proud of that today mm. you know so we can't fix the past we can change the future by doing the work today mm. um, so hopefully soon the forgiveness of self will come to you I reckon that's work in progress yeah really? yeah and you know that's what recovery is you know for the rest of your life for the rest of my life I'm gonna be working progress um, you know, we don't know what we don't know. We learn things about ourselves as we go. We figure out triggers. We figure out, um, you know, character defects, and then we can start working on it. Um, we're never going to know everything in the in the beginning. Mm. Uh, but when once we identify something, we can take the steps to make that a little better. I don't know. Since I've been here, I've noticed uh, like change in, in, in the people in my relationships. Um, Something that I had not, I, I didn't ever think was going to come to me. Like my mom, my mom's there for me now. My my kids' mother's there. Uh, they forgive me for pretty much everything, everything I put them through. You know, they tell me they're proud of me and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then I'm in another relationship that I'm trying to fix now, but the destruction that's there, I can't fix that, yeah. and I can't force that other person to to whatever they're going through and feeling and whatever, yeah. I can't, I feel like I have to change it, but I can't, it's on you know. Yeah, exactly, and, th and that's, that's another thing. Um, we just worked the first step together. Uh, last week, we were on the second step. Um, and one of the things that, that, you know, the first step was all about, uh, you know, we started talking about the serenity prayer. Um, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And really understanding what can we change? Um, what can't we change? We can't change the past. We can't change other people. We can't change, um, you know, things that we don't have any part in. Yeah. You know, we can change our reactions and our actions. Um, how do we react to people? And you know what we choose to do. So, you know, those are really the only two things we can control. Yeah. Um, and learning how to control that in certain situations, um, you know, sometimes I would react and I would run out to get high. You know, that is no longer a choice. You know, today I have that choice um, and I choose not to, so I have to find another way to do that. Stick around after this commercial break uh, as I finish this conversation with Jason.
Welcome back uh, to this episode of Recover Loud. Uh, I'm here with Jason McKenzie, uh, one of the residents at Christopher's home, uh, a home that I manage. And, uh, you know, I get the pleasure and the privilege uh, to support you guys through your programs and, uh, you know, help guide you to, to the resources that you didn't have before. Um, so what is it you're doing today uh, to work on your recovery that may be different from what you've done in the past? Uh, today, I would say that I'm giving myself a chance. Um, mm. I'm currently doing IOP. I got signed up for my DEEP. Um, but currently mm. doing DEEP. Uh, trying to be more open and honest about things that are going on in my life. Um, so, just, just trying to be sober one day at a time. Yeah. So, what is it? Um, so, you, you mentioned you're in IOP, it's an intensive outpatient program. Um, what does that consist of? What are you doing there? So what I'm doing IOP is uh, we go we go to IOP. I go uh, Monday through Friday for three hours a day. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's time consuming, but I just try to focus on what I can take from it. It's kind of like going to AA. You just take what you want from it and yeah. pretty much leave the rest. Yeah, and so that's basically three hours of counseling. Um, that That is run by a counselor. Yeah. Um, and it's a group counseling session. Um, you know, I actually found a lot of benefit in, in the rehab I went to, it was, you know, all day. Um, but we had group counseling, um, different, different groups, different counselors, and, you know, they taught us different things. Yeah. You know, they taught us life skills, they taught us coping skills, they taught us relapse prevention. So yeah, uh, in, in those group counseling sessions, I got to learn from other people, their perspectives. Um, you know, and that's really why I... I work as a recovery coach because I understand what listening to somebody else's experience, you know, can do for me. Um, because I'm learning things that I never knew before. You know, I've got what I know, you know, learned from my mother, learned from the teachers I had, you know, where I grew up. And I don't know what's on the other side because I, I was never there. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, you living on the streets. Uh, being in the youth center, going to prison for, you know, spending 25 years. Uh, you've got a lot of experience that, that I don't. Mm. And, uh, you know, eventually, learning how you got through things, you know, can help me and, and can help other people. Uh, and that's the value of sharing your story on, on Recover Loud, really. Um, so what else do you do? Uh, are you attending meetings? Yeah, I go to as much meetings as possible. Yes, we go to meetings. Uh, I was able to pick up my 30-day chip. And now I finally got past that and it, it boosts my self-esteem and it, it pushes me forward to like want more. Yeah, I remember actually we, uh, I think it was day 24 and that's when you told me that Struggles you were about to, and it was getting real. Yeah, that and, and that you were about to reach that milestone that you had never reached before. Um, so I was actually, I was proud of you the day you picked up that shit. Thank you. And, um, you know, and I'm glad you were proud of yourself. You know, you kind of beamed a little bit that night. Yeah, and, I definitely. You know, and, and, and we should be proud of these accomplishments because we never made those, you know, we never reached those goals before. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one day at a time, you put 45 days together now. Yeah, that feels know? good. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what else is coming up for you? What, what are your plans over the next 30 days? Next 30 days, man. I don't even try to think that far ahead. I mean, yeah. When I was told it was one day at a time. Yeah. I mean, that's that's trying to. For all my time in life, like I couldn't even fathom one day at a time. Yeah. You know, I mean, I see some of these guys in 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 the uh, in the in the meetings, AA and whatnot, that got multiple years, and they're saying one day at a time. Yeah. 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 Um, and, and that's what it is because it's a daily struggle yeah. and you know the only day that counts is today is the one we're in yeah um, so uh, congratulations on putting four, 45 days together Absolutely. Uh, for the first time um, you know I've seen your growth and progress over the last 30 days I've, been, I've known you and um, you know it, it's exciting for me and you know I, I'm, I'm grateful to be uh, you know a part of your journey thank you so uh, thanks for sharing your story, Jay. Appreciate, I appreciate you coming on. That's my favorite word, absolutely. <laughs> Mind you. <laughs> absolutely. If I had advice to give anyone out there from my experience, uh, 
I would say stop beating yourself up. Reach out to someone closest to you. There's no reason to hold back. Like, I get the struggle, or we all get the struggle that that in the act of addiction. Uh, if possible, reach out to somebody in recovery or someone close that that you trust that it can get you to where you need to be. There's also people out there like Mike that you can reach out to, and he can give you connections to whatever it is that you need to get to. Recover loud, everyone. Let's go. I'm on a journey to discover the truth. Living life in recovery is lovely. You got the power in you. Surround yourself with positive energy. Judges hitting people with provocative penalties. Need to make a change. Advocate to change the laws. Prove the people that it's not insane. When you stand behind a cause, I'm here to speak about the pain. Recover loud to normalize the disease that's been killing all my friends and my family. The time is now to let it all go and recover loud. The benefit is healthy people. People, family and friends that never have to overdose ever again never have to plead out to a lesser offense I'm proud to say that I recover loud I never thought I could but I'm so proud that I discovered how to live my life again controlling my own destiny I needed recovery I still need it desperately addiction never defined my identity. I recovered loud here to tell my own story